Hi everyone, Dr. Luke Peterson here, physical therapist with the Knee Replacement Therapists. In this episode of the Knee to Know Show, we're going to talk about cemented versus uncemented knee replacement surgeries. Hi everyone, so today we're talking about cemented versus uncemented surgeries. And what we're discussing really is the way that the surgeon is going to adhere the prosthetic components, so the metal components of your knee replacement, adhere them and tighten them and stabilize them to your bone. So with a cemented surgery, basically what that means is the surgeon is going to use a fast drying uh, type of bone cement to affix the prosthetic. So this is some type of acrylic polymer and it basically works is it's applied, it dries very quickly, and it affixes the metal components to your knee replacement or to your bones. The cementless procedure is what you use is a press fit um, textured type of knee replacement. So it's textured um, it's also kind of has this rough surface you can think of it as, or it's very porous coating, uh, very porous, has some holes. And what this allows is for the bone and new bone to grow into and attach to the metal prosthetic. And when that new bone grows into the prosthetic, then that is going to provide that stability and hold the metal prosthetic to your bone. So it allows it to adhere over time. In some instances with the cementless, um, you might think of having um, some screws or little pegs that are gonna hold the bone to the metal component when, while the bone is growing. But overall, basically, it's a rough surface, textured, porous surface that the new bone grows into a couple millimeters or so and then adheres to and attaches the bone to the metal. So things to think about for a cemented knee replacement, if you're someone who has low bone density, uh, osteopenia, osteoporosis, then the cemented is gonna work better. We don't wanna trust bone that is very weak, very low density to be able to provide that stability of a cementless um, replacement so in this case, it's very common and very likely that you're going to have a cemented knee replacement. You can also think about with a cemented replacement, they can actually put in that bone cement, they can put a little bit of antibiotic, and this can be beneficial as that little bit of antibiotic in the bone cement can actually help decrease a little bit your risk of any type of infection with knee replacement surgery. Now with a cementless, the risk is still relatively low, but putting that little antibiotic in the cemented might decrease that risk just that little bit more. Some things to keep in mind as well with the cemented is you're firmly affixing and setting the prosthetic in a very quick manner. The, the cement is going to dry very quickly, and once it's dried, that metal component is cemented and stabilized to the bone. With the cementless, you have to think about it's going to take a little bit longer for that bond, that asphyxiation, to occur. The new bone has to grow in. This is going to take a little bit number of weeks to perform and to occur. And so with that being true, there are some um, debates between surgeons about possibly having some restrictions on what you can do with a cementless procedure while that bone is growing. So sometimes you might have what's called a weight-bearing limitation. So you might not be able to put full weight through that knee replacement, through that leg, for a number of weeks, maybe 4 to 12 weeks. Now, in some instances, the surgeon may um, say that you can be full weight-bearing and you can put weight on that um, leg early on, even if you did have a cementless procedure. It's really something that is inconclusive and there's a lot of debate in the orthopedic community between surgeons and um, the experts about if a person has a cementless knee replacement done, should they have uh, protect that knee replacement? Should they not be full weight bearing early on? Or is it okay for them to put weight through that leg um, and put full body weight through that leg 
early on after surgery. So that's something that is you have to keep in mind. Um, depends on what your surgeon's thoughts are in that regard. Now, going back to the cemented knee replacement, so using the bone cement to adhere the bone and the prosthetic, something to think about is this acrylic, this bone cement, can start to kind of degrade and break off over time. And this can cause a couple problems. So one thing, it can cause some loosening of your prosthetic, loosening of the knee replacement. And it also might cause a little bit of inflammation kind of in and around the joint. And in very rare instances, this inflammation, these broken off pieces can enter your bloodstream and this can cause some more serious problems, although this is relatively rare as well. But it can degrade, can start to break off the bone cement over time, over a long period of time. And in some rare instances as well, people can have some allergic reactions to the bone cement, to the um, material, to what is used. Now, going back to cementless, so again, using that porous, um, textured surface to help the new bone grow and adhere to the knee replacement, there's a lot of debate, but a lot of belief that this is going to potentially cause a better long-term bond, a lo better long-term asphyxiation of the bone and the prosthetic. Um, you don't have to worry about the cement breaking down over time and less worry about loosening. Um, of course, again, like I said early on, it does require some healthier bones, so you have to have good bone mineral density, good healthy bones to be able to do the cementless procedure. And again, there's that time component of um, having to wait for that new bone to grow. Do you have to wait for a number of weeks, three months, whatever it may be, for that new bone to grow and then adhere to the knee replacement? And so that might be some protected um, protection of the leg and the knee during that time, possibly not putting full body weight um, through the knee replacement for the first number of weeks after surgery. So which is better? It's really still up for debate, really inconclusive. Um, it depends on what the particular things you're looking for, um, depends on the surgeon's understanding and the surgeon's experience with the different types. It depends on the individual patient. So are you a younger, healthier individual? Are you getting a partial knee replacement versus a full knee replacement? Um, are you someone who is maybe has a little more risk? Do you have good bone health? Do you have osteopenia? Do you have osteoporosis? Um, all these kind of things play a part. And so it's really hard to say if one technique is any better than the other technique. Traditionally, um, cementless, or excuse me, cemented knee replacement is used a lot more commonly and on average, and but I think that's kind of fluctuated and changed, and I honestly don't know at this moment kind of what, how, what percentage are you cemented versus cementless for their knee replacement procedures. There's also something to keep in mind, something called a hybrid total knee replacement, so certain components are using the cementless procedure, such as the tibial or the shin bone component, uses maybe a cementless procedure, and then they use the cement for the femur or the thigh bone attachment of the prosthetic. So that's something that is out there as well. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I post videos daily. I love to hear your comments, hear your questions, and help you through your knee replacement journey. As always, if you love these videos, I post content every day. Um, be sure to subscribe, click that button in the lower corner, click on notifications so you always know when a new video comes up. Thank you very much for watching everyone, have a great day.